Hello and welcome again to Talk TV. I'm your host, Doug Brendel. Our guest today is Shannon Moore. She is with Food for Thought, a very worthwhile program right here in the Pahrump Valley. So with no further introduction, I give you Shannon. Shannon, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you for having me. So give us a little background on what is Food for Thought. Uh, Food for Thought is an educational program. What we do is we provide backpacks full of food for the kids to take home on the weekends. They get backpacks every Friday, unless, of course, there is a holiday, and then we include that in there. Uh, they get enough food to feed them um, Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We do throw in some snacks if possible. Um, we include things like um, your protein, uh, potted meats, tuna, um, things like that and then we try to include uh, some pudding because it has calcium raisins for the iron and other various items uh, such as fortified fruit snacks things like that that will really help the kids so that it's a nutritional um, nutritionally balanced right. meal right not junk food. right no junk food we try not to put in any candy pop anything that isn't really necessary for right. a, a kid's growth and well-being mm -hmm. now you work hand in hand with the schools to do this? We do. Um, we have a coordinator who is a volunteer at every single school. Some of them are Kiwanis members, some of them are just volunteers. And they come and fill the backpacks and then they take the backpacks to each school to be distributed on Fridays. So we do work very closely with the principals and the administrative staff at each school and we greatly appreciate their support. Uh -huh. And how do the parents of the kids find out about this and, and sign up for it? We send home permission slips uh, at the beginning of each year. And so that allows parents the opportunity to read through the permission slip and see what the program is all about. And if they're interested, they just fill it out and send it back in. Mm -hmm. um, we have recently partnered with Three Square in Las Vegas and um, which helps us greatly with our overhead costs and everything and so now we have two permission slips so any parent who is interested in um, being on the program they will have to fill out two permission slips one is ours one is for three square uh, in order to participate in the program and if someone has more than one child going to school each child can participate yeah each child is is eligible um we are specifically for students in prompt valley so any child who is enrolled in school and that also includes homeschool students uh -huh. as well so as long as they're in school they're eligible for the program because i do want to stress that it is an educational program the the point in the program is so that kids eat over the weekend so that they come back with a full stomach ready to learn instead of focusing on uh, the, the things that come with hunger, the, yeah. you know, being lethargic and having stomach pains and headaches, right. blurred vision. Those are the types of things that happen. And what a lot of people don't know is that uh, in our town, we have a lot of students who rely on the free breakfasts and lunches that they get at school. Mm -hmm. And then when they go home, they don't eat at night. So wow. it's very hard for these students, especially over the weekend, to come back and have the same educational opportunities as the other students who, who do get to eat. And so that's why this program is so important for them. How long has Food for Thought been around, Shannon? I see you're the founder. Yes, it's been around for approximately four years. I started the program when I was the PTO president at Mance Elementary School. I had freshly started a PTO there, and I was looking for ways to make a difference and really help the kids at, on my campus. And um, after asking around, uh, one of the teachers in particular who was very involved there said, you know, what people don't see or pay any attention to is that there's a lot of kids here not eating. And, mm -hmm. and that's, you know, tragic. Yeah. And so I started looking into backpack programs, which they're common all over the country, mm -hmm. and um, found a rural, rural area here in Nevada that I was able to kind of um, call and ask them questions about how they did it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little different when you're in a really large city than, you know, a small area uh, cut off from a lot of resources and so um, she gave me a lot of great ideas and so I just threw it together we started out with 32 kids at Mance Elementary School and then we quickly grew um, <laughs> went from 70 or 32 to 72 and then that summer we decided um, the community outreach uh, mm -hmm. committee here which mm -hmm. is a part of the Nye Community Coalition mm -hmm. asked for somebody to, to feed kids over the summer mm -hmm. and at sure. the time they were looking to feed hot food they wanted three meals a day hot food mm -hmm. 
we could not commit to that. I it was me and only one other volunteer. Logistical nightmare. Yeah, but we did say, hey, we can do something about it. Instead of giving backpacks, we'll give a bag of food enough for an entire week. Yeah. Um, for each child to eat all really week great. long. And so our first summer, we had 210 wow. students. So we now serve uh, approximately 470 students. Wow. And we're at all the elementary schools, the middle school, and we do have a few high school students. We're still not, um, we don't have a strong foothold at, at the high school, um, logistically trying to figure out how to get the food to those kids. But we do have some that actually pick up from our food bank. Oh, okay. um, so that's also an option if we have homeschooled kids or um, students that, for whatever reason, don't want to pick up the backpack, um, then they're more than welcome to come pick them up from us. The food bank you mentioned, that's not like most food banks people think about where they can go and get something. You're really, you you have it there and then you fill up the backpacks and you take it to them. Right, it's, it, I call it our food bank. It's, it's our food bank. It is not a local food bank where people can just Warehouse. come pick up, yeah, come pick up food. Um, and there are a lot of them in town and we're very knowledgeable of all the places that people can go. So if anyone wants to stop by and ask us questions, Shonda and I are always more than happy to give people information where they need to go to get things. Um, but we're located at New Hope Fellowship, um, okay. which they were nice enough to give us um, a trailer to keep our food in. And we're so blessed and thank you know thankful to them uh, because we really didn't have anywhere to go. The program grew so big that the principal at Mance Elementary School kind of said, Shannon, I'm sorry, but... I, you know, I need you to make this your own organization, get it off of our campus, and try to get your own 501c3 status. And um, unfortunately, what we found is that um, in trying to get the program to keep going and not lose momentum, um, trying to get the money and the paperwork and everything filled out was crazy. Mm -hmm. So we were very, very lucky to become a part of Kiwanis. We are now a Kiwanis um, Club of Prompt Valley program. And so that has been a really good uh, team effort. It's just great because we get a lot of volunteers um, through them. And so we're awesome. never, never looking for volunteers. I mean, we love people to come, but we're never strapped and stranded anymore. And That's so it's great. great. Yeah, because the way this valley set up, everything's so far flung to get something from one place out to a bunch of different places that's no small thing is it Especially, no what 400 some backpacks full of food yeah it, do, it does take a lot and i have to give a lot of credit to our coordinators i mean we have some that have to drive all the way out to hayford and floyd elementary mm -hmm. come back with the backpacks fill them and then drive all the way back out and they do that without complaint wow. and i definitely appreciate them local but heroes yes yes they are each and every one of them wow that's great uh what else is going on here I should know about <laughs> before we bring on your cohort, Shonda? Well, we always have um, we always have fundraisers going on. We always have events. We love to involve the community. Our community has been so great to us, and I I do want to point out that for the most part, for the four years that that we were um, getting our program going, it was solely run on community support and the people here in our town. Um, Karen Jackson at K and I would do. Um, food drives and people would just give and give and give and it's just amazing to see how our community comes together yes. and so I've always been very very appreciative of that and now that we have three square on board um, it's really it's great because they give us 350 meals each wow. week so wow. of our 470 350 of those each week are covered for free so um, that still does not cover the other, you know, 170 or whatever that's left. And it also doesn't um, cover our summers, which is a very large cost. Because when you're talking about feeding each student, se you know, seven days a week, three meals right. a day, that's right. a lot. Um, so just I would say, you know, to anyone out there, be on the lookout. Give us a call. Um, we're in the mirror and the newspaper quite often. Um, and just, you know, let us know that if you want to help. We love volunteers. We love people who want to come and, and um, do food drives, things like that, anything. Great. Wow. It's great to hear so such good things about the, the people of Pahrump Valley helping out like that. When we come back, I'll be joined by Shonda Whelan of Food for Thought. She'll let you know how you can help out in this very worthwhile cause. Don't go anywhere. And welcome back. I'm joined by Shonda Whelan of Food for Thought, the co-chair, and she's going to give us some information on 
how to help this very worthwhile program and the Kiwanis Club's involvement in it. So Shonda, how are you today? I'm good. So tell us a little bit about how the Kiwanis Club helps out the, the, the cause. Well, um, one of the things that the Kiwanis Club, uh, the biggest part of the involvement is the liability. Um, we, we did some searching when we started, as Shannon talked about, the looking into being, becoming our own 501c3. Mm -hmm. And when we found out all the financial cost um, that we're going to come up with that, uh, it was going to be a pretty big burden, which every dollar we had to spend on things like that was money we weren't going to be able to spend on food feeding the kids. Um, so when, when I approached the Kiwanis and I talked to them, they said, sure, we can do that. They were all about it. Their biggest motto is serving the children of the world. And this falls right under what their uh, guidelines are. Um, we have about 50 members of Kiwanis. And let me tell you, I can call them on a moment's notice and they will be there to unload trucks. They will be there to pack bags. They will be there for everything that we need done without any hesitation. And it's great. Um, to have that kind of support because yes, because when Shannon and I were trying to do this stuff by ourselves, some days we were about ready to pull our hair out. I bet. <laughs> well, that's really good. I'm going to put up a, let's see, there it is. There's our phone number also. So if someone wants to donate, would they donate to the Kiwanis? Or yes, absolutely. They, okay. All the checks need to be made out to Kiwanis. Um, they can mail a check if they want to make a, do a, finan a cash donation, financial donation check, whatever. They can mail it to P.O. Box 355, um, Prump, Nevada, uh, 89041. Didn't okay. think about that, but um, that's one of the options that you have. Um, or we're always willing to accept a donation right at the club meetings. Uh, we meet at Wolfie's on Thursday nights at 630 at their clubhouse. Oh. Um, anybody's welcome to come see what we're all about and uh, take a minute, you know, come in. You don't have to stay, but you can come see a little bit about it. Uh, see what else we're involved in. What kind of feedback do you get on this from the people who benefit the most? Do you hear from... Uh, mothers and fathers and students and I hear from a lot of people and I, I tell you what these kids um, when you do the summer program or when you're actually in the schools and you you talk to some of these kids sometimes these food bags are better than Christmas wow you know when they get their Vienna sausages and they're so excited their li eyes just light up you know yeah. it tugs on the heartstrings yeah it does well hunger is one of those things that none of us ever want to go through but it is a sad fact of life that mm -hmm. it exists and it exists right here in our hometown Yes, it's a sad thing. We do have a lot of um, big supporters, and I'll have to tell you, Desert View Hospital, Valley Electric uh, Association, they put on a huge golf outing last October, and they're planning to do another one. And it brought in uh, over $7,000, which wow. was double what they figured they'd bring in, um, not to mention the two truckloads, three truckloads of food that they were able to collect you know, canned goods and, and things like that um, that really benefited this program. Um, we've had numerous uh, service organizations that have donated. Red Hat Ladies, there's a couple of groups that have sent us money, um, which we really appreciate. The Seroptimists have been really great about uh, donations. They showed up with a truckload of food and, and cash donations. And um, we have a... a Little, uh, gal Mary Marsh she is just unbelievable she goes out through the community to the second hand stores looking for backpacks because we need new used you know gently used backpacks um, we're always in need of backpacks do the kids take the backpack home yes they bring take it back empty and yep, you guys and go out we, pick it up and refill it and, and we refill them yep they take their backpacks home every Friday and they bring them back Monday or Tuesday and then the coordinators go to the schools and pick them up and bring them to the church uh, New Hope Fellowship where we fill them and then send them back to the schools and then repeat the process and, and just put anybody's Fears to rest, you are a legitimate legal charity. Yes. 501c3. Yes, through the Kiwanis. We run under the Kiwanis's 501c3. Oh, okay. Um, they, the, the backpacks are assigned to each student. Each student has a number. Uh, there's no names or anything like that. So it's kind of 
uh, there's the an- anonymity that, you know, uh, so people don't say, oh, you're on the food for thought program, you know, it, and you're just getting like the backpacks are all different kind of looks. Right. They all else. have different kind of looks. No two. Well, some two look alike, but the kids all have numbers. They all just have a number on them and they know what backpack is their number and they pick them up and they take them home. And it's it's ran really efficiently um, and they bring their backpacks back the following week. We refill them and move on. So and this is a true success story. You I would guys think so. You guys you You can meet the need. And right now. More kids need to come on board, then you guys can be there right to now, help them too. Right now, but we are getting ready to, um, we did some calculations here, and we figure that we can feed um, a child for seven days for, believe it or not, uh, about $10 which that's 21 meals and wow. and that's with the help of three square with the help of smith's smith's has been great partner with us um they sell us their food for uh wholesale plus seven percent which is real you know realistically we get a lot of a lot of food um so when you and talk it's not seconds no not banged up or no anything they like order that. it special and we unload it right off the truck nice. and into our trucks or cars or whatever we happen to have that day um, we have a lot of volunteers that have to help do that, uh, moving the stuff from Smith's to the, to the facility we use at New Hope. Um, it takes a lot of manpower. This is, this is not an easy thing to do, and it's gotta, you've got to be committed. I mean, week after week, you know, this happens every Friday. We load the backpacks from 9 to 11. That's also our pickup time for homeschool, high school students that need to pick up. Um, we're at the church from 9 to 11. Uh, we would like you to come by there if, if you don't want to carry the backpack home in fear of bullying or whatever the situation is, if your parents can get you there or they can come pick it up for you because you'll be in school. But um, there's just all these little things that make this such a great program. Um, when you have four, we have 476 students on this program. Yeah. And if you think it's, if it's $5 for the weekend to feed each one, that's $2,000 a week minimal. Yeah. 2,500 is closer to the number now, right. um, that we're going through in food each week. Wow. So we do need all the support we can get from the community. Mm. We do need all the donations, food, cash. We don't care. Any money that you, you know, I want to make people understand this 100% of the money that you donate goes back to the program. There's no administration costs. Shannon and I don't take a paycheck. This is all 100% back to the program. Wow. And that really needs to be emphasized, oh, yeah. you know. A lot of people are gun shy about donating to charities because they'll find out that, well, this charity over here, They'll actually allocate about 50% of what they take in for the, the good of the, the nope. recipients and 50% for administrative. Absolutely not. like this, 100% mm-hmm. goes towards purchasing food for right. these kids. Food or backpacks or things that we need, you know, not, I, I wouldn't even say that. If they put on that they're donating food, they're, it's going to food. If they put on their check, please buy backpacks with it, we buy backpacks with it. If someone wants to help, like fill the backpacks or whatever and they do that through the Kiwanis do you mm-hmm. actually have to join the Kiwanis nope or absolutely not you just say, show up and just show up uh we're like I said we're there Friday mornings from 9 to 11 um summer hours will be different um you know we're there unless there's no school on Friday then that changes too so there's because the, the backpacks have to be out early mm-hmm. we're um we're covering uh, the four elementary schools, the middle school, uh, two pre- pre-K uh, classes um, here in the Valley. There's, you know, and, and like I said, it's 476 students right now. That's great. I mean, just the difference it makes in one kid's life to not go hungry. That's, uh, that's a great thing. Okay, well, I'd like to thank you for coming <laughs> in here today, Shonda. And okay. uh, that's, a, that's a good thing you're doing. Thanks for having us. Uh-huh. And I hope some of you will join them in packing those packs up, maybe giving some cash donations and helping out the school kids here in Pahrump who don't have to go hungry now over the weekends. That's it for today's show. Join us again right here on the TV Guide channel.